On behalf of the city of Yonkers and Untermeyer Gardens Conservancy, welcome back to midwinter in the garden. And rather than looking at a plant list this time around, I wanna look at some oak trees. And we're gonna look at them a bit differently than maybe you would expect. While these oaks are considered venerable specimen, they also have some vulnerabilities. And I'm standing next to an oak that's between the walled garden and the community center. So any problems it may be having are of especially concern to the architecture nearby. And the first thing I'd like to point out is this open wound in the tree. And you can see a witness mark of where it had been oozing, which indicates some level of fungus. And then stepping around a little bit more, we can see where the bark has started to slough off and is really no longer attached to the cambium whatsoever. So that's an especial concern. And here just in front of that, we can see the frozen fruiting bodies of a fungus that has been infecting the entire root crown. So this is gonna be a root fungus or a butt fungus. And while it doesn't look like much, what's happening inside the tree below these fruiting bodies is extensive and has really started to put this tree into decline. Um, and while we're gonna have to remove it here. So while this isn't that visible, we're gonna take a look at some other oaks on the property where there's some very visible issues with fungus. While the oak tree we just looked at had very subtle indications of what is a devastating fungal infection, here we can see the results of a devastating fungal infection. We found this oak dead when we were installing the rhododendron garden, the rhododendron walk here at Untermeyer. And we have cut it down to a wildlife snag so insects and birds can have fun with it. But if we take a close look in here at what is a core rot, where we lose the center of the tree due to a fungus, if you look along what's left of this core, you can see where the tree attempted to compartmentalize in these rectangular patterns the fungus as it was spreading throughout the tree. Um, the core wood is largely gone. There's still some uninfected cambium layer here, and you can see just on the outside the bark. So this all happened from the inside out. There weren't a lot of obvious signs until we started to lose branches and realized that this tree as well had to come down before it fell and did damage to the neighboring garden or the neighboring deer fence um, and was a real issue. But really a sight to see, you can see the old bark coming through on the far side of the plant um, and just how devastating a fungal infection can be. So we moved up into the hill to our future meadow terrace um, and I'm standing next to what was until recently a 200 year old oak tree that you could see from the walled garden looking toward the river and the New Jersey Palisades. This is another case of a core rot. Um, when we knocked this tree down, it cantilevered itself on a, stone, a big boulder above me and sort of has this frozen moment in time of this tree falling. But if we take a closer look at the trunk, we can see exactly what happened here. So this is another example of core rot, and we had no idea this was happening until we started to find dead branches in the canopy. This tree, again, is right in the viewshed from our main walled garden out to the river and it died completely last spring. It leafed out for a moment and then lost all its leaves, and we've just now gotten down here to address it. Again, not knowing exactly what this tree had succumbed to, when we started to cut it down, it's a very large tree, again, 200 years old. I could barely get the chainsaw all the way across it. It took me many approaches, but then it started to behave really strangely and break apart very quickly, and I was a bit spooked by it. But if you step in closer here, you can see the reason why is this whole core of the trunk had rotted and had largely disappeared. Um, the wood that was here had no strength left in it. So when I thought I was cutting through a giant oak tree, you can see here it was just a few inches on this side that was even holding this tree together um, as I was making the cut. So again, an invisible death almost. We had no real visible signs that this tree was infected with anything until it had died. And then when we'd done this autopsy, so to speak, um, we found this huge devastating core rot. And the last example of a fungal infection causing the loss of an oak here at Untermar I would like to look at is here at the Temple of Love where we lost a 150 year old grand specimen that was really the most important plant at the Temple of Love planting. Um, 
we did see uh, leptiferous fungus, which is a root fungus this time. Um, it's expressed with a fruiting body of chicken of the woods, which is an edible fungus you may be familiar with. So we knew that this plant had a problem. On one of our big wind storms, this plant was knocked over and actually rolled down the hill. And you can see what's left of a rootless stump here at the bottom of the garden. Um, this was a devastating loss, but what it has given us is the opportunity to replace it with this juvenile bur oak, Quercus macrocarpa, which we hope will become the dominant, most important tree at the Temple of Love in the future. I've always thought about oak trees as being these venerable, impervious species, but obviously these fungal root rots and crown rots and butt rots and core rots are a real vulnerability to these oaks. So something to keep an eye on in your own gardens, in your own plantings, um, and a slightly different way to look at oaks. So thanks again for walking around the garden with me. Um, we'll be back soon and maybe look at early spring here at Untermeyer Gardens.